Happy Father's Day for those in Australia. My wife has picked some beautiful flowers from our garden actually. Um, there's some rosemary and such, so yeah, it's lovely. So very lucky in Australia, weather in Perth has been fantastic for the past few days. Um, hopefully from now on we have good spring weather. Right. I'm Jude Teo, specialist in fertility, gynecology and pregnancy care. I had a patient that came to see me during the uh, early in their pregnancy. So she said from the last period she was about eight weeks. So I performed an ultrasound scan and confirmed, yep, she was eight weeks pregnant. And then the partner um, responded, look, hang on. Um, she can't be eight weeks pregnant. She ovulated two weeks after her last period. So in theory, she could be only as far as six weeks pregnant. How could you say she was eight weeks pregnant? Um, he was right. Um, he's right. A, now, we basically, pregnancy actually won't happen until you ovulate, right? So in the first half of the menstrual cycle, the first two weeks, there's no pregnancy. Pregnancy can only start theoretically or practically even after ovulation. Um, we say how many weeks we are pregnant based on, I suppose, tradition. And also not many people know exactly when they ovulate. Um, so, you know, usually say, look, when was your last period? And then we calculate from the very last first day of the very last period. That's traditionally how we start calculating a pregnancy. So, yep, in size, yes, only can only be as far as six weeks pregnant for that patient, but the way we say is eight weeks pregnancy. And um, not everybody knows when they ovulate. Some of my patients know exactly when the ovulation occurs. Um, or sometimes we might get it wrong. A, sometimes some women's uh, menstrual period are not regular. Sometimes um, the period, menstrual period can be, uh, the menstrual cycle can be longer. So for example, someone um, having a um, menstrual cycle of 35 days, then usually ovulation will not happen at day 14. That is why for natural pregnancy, apart from tracking, you know, someone has gone to fertility center or GP or specialist tracking the cycle, if we know exactly when ovulation happens, that is okay. Um, for many people, what we need is um, an ultrasound scan. For most people, actually, unless you do IVF, it's best to have an ultrasound scan to confirm, to confirm the gestational age or how far we are pregnant. A, the best time to do ultrasound scan, I would say, is about 8 weeks to about 14 weeks within that period of time. The reason, a, if it's pregnancy is too early, for example, 6-7 weeks, it's a bit too small, it's very hard to measure accurately how far on we are. So from 8 weeks, pregnancy, the, you know, the fetus, fetal pole, is a bit bigger and uh, basically babies a bit bigger then can measure from that from you know we call crown crown rump length crown rump sorry it's hard to pronounce crown rump length here we go um and um crl is a, is a short form for it so from 8 to 14 weeks why later on is a bit inaccurate because a at the very early stage, all babies, they are quite similar in size, plus minus three days. If you look, you know, if you measure accurately, could be sometimes five days, plus minus, but three days. If you measure it accurately with a good new scanner. After 14 weeks, 15 weeks, the second trimester, different babies grow differently. Um, so, you know, if you measure baby, how heavy, how big, at, for example, 30 weeks, um, you can't change the date or you can't date that um, according to that uh, stage accurately because different babies have different size. For example, a taller guy doesn't mean that he's older than a slightly shorter guy. Likewise, you have babies, term babies, let's say 40 weeks babies, you have 4 kilograms babies, you have 2.5 kilograms babies. They're on within normal parameters, um, but they're just different size. So from 14 weeks onwards, 
different babies to grow at different size. Now moving on to IVF pregnancy, how do we calculate how far on are we? So for fresh embryos, if you have fresh um, egg collection and you transfer the fresh embryos in, the day of ovulation is day of egg collection essentially. So for example, if you know someone's um, is pregnant and uh, egg collection was 10 weeks ago, so actually she's 12 weeks pregnant, yeah? Egg, collect egg collection is a bit like ovulation, you plus two weeks to plus the, you know, to the last menstrual period in a way. And um, so 10 weeks last egg collection, she's 12 weeks pregnant. How about frozen embryo transfer? Now frozen embryo transfer, if you're really precise, you want to know how um, old is that embryo. For example, if the embryo is frozen on day five and thaw out on day five and transfer back on day five, that embryo is five days old. So the way I would calculate is two weeks plus five days um, to, you know, to go back to the last menstrual period to know how far we are. For example, if we have a day five embryo transferred eight weeks ago for this patient, um, and this patient, the ovulation time will be eight weeks and five days because it was a fi um, day five embryos. And um, how far on are we in pregnancy? You plus another two weeks. So I that she would be 10 weeks and five days pregnant. So embryo transfer of day five embryos a, eight weeks ago. So she, ovulation time um, based on this will be eight weeks and five days. How far on we are? We are 10 weeks and five days. Now some center do day three frozen embryo transfer as well. In this instance, you add three days rather than five days. So uh, eight weeks ago, day three embryo transfer with a frozen embryo transfer using day three embryos. So what we have is ovulation day will be eight weeks and three days plus an embryo age. And how far in she is? You add another two weeks, 10 weeks and three days. So in IVF, we know precisely how far on we are because we know precisely how old is the embryo. All right, that's it from me. Bye-bye.